This gorgeous knit top was made from scraps. I love doing that and the pattern I'm going to show you today is perfect for that. I've made three versions. Most of the pattern pieces come from my scrap bin. I'm super excited to share these three and happy that I have garments made out of these scraps. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm excited to share the three garments I've made. All from one pattern, the way it's made and designed is perfect to use smaller pieces of fabric that you have left over that are super pretty, that you might find valuable, but that just aren't enough to make a whole garment out of. I know myself, I have a box in a cupboard full of these neat scraps that are super high quality materials, very nice prints. I have loved the garments I've made from them in the past and I always have the dream of having them made up into something else at some point and I've done that today. The pattern I have used to create all these pieces that give my scraps a second life is a Skylar Knit Raglan hoodie from Sinclair Patterns. It, is, it says it's a hoodie but you don't need to put actual hoods in there because there's so many options. It's a semi-fitted raglan sleeve hoodie, the name says it all. It has raglan sleeves and it is semi-fitted in the style. It's not a boxy, oversized type garment. I think the nicest, most aesthetic feature is what you see in the front with a hidden kangaroo pocket. So you don't see the kangaroo pocket, it's hidden and the way it's sewn is extremely fun. I found it super fun to put together and definitely looks harder than it is. So once you get your head around it, it's very easy and of course I filmed it. It reaches the mid to full hip. For the bottom of the sleeve, you can choose between a regular cuff or a double cuff that's layered for like a thumb hole effect. And to finish the neckline, you have a lot of options. One of them is just a round neckline with a neckband and that is what I've actually used for this time because I'm working with scraps smaller pieces of fabric, I didn't really have enough to do all the other options, which is a lined cow neckline with a drawstring, I think it's really nice. Then you have an overlapped hood with a drawstring, they're all lined, just overlaps here. And the other one is a scuba hood, which is closed up to here with a drawstring. So if I'd had enough fabric, I would have done other neckline finishes. In this case, I just had little bits left over to do the neckbands. So I've done a round neckline on two of them. And for one of them, I've hacked it to a V neckline and put a V neckband just because why not? <laughs> and I've really enjoyed making these. If you go to the Sinclair Patterns website every week on a Monday or Tuesday, you will find patterns on special. If you click on the top of the website, you will see three or four options there and you'll find some that are discounted for a whole week. This is what is going on with the Skylar this week. It is 20% off until next Monday or Tuesday. And I have all the details in the description box and also my affiliate link if you would like to use it. I do get a little commission if you buy patterns using my affiliate link and it's one of the ways I make an income. I always do this disclosure so that it's super clear to you. It doesn't cost you any extra to buy a pattern through my link. That just means that part of that sale comes back to me and that is how I make an income doing what I do here, making all this free content. You need medium to heavyweight knit fabrics that have a horizontal stretch of about 20 to 30 percent so they don't need to stretch a huge amount but definitely they need to have some spandex in there they also need to stretch vertically about 10 to 20 percent so those low stretch knits that don't stretch vertically I think are not going to work here because it is semi-fitted at the bust I think you would have mobility issues with the raglan sleeves if your knit fabric didn't stretch vertically. So I think you do need to test it, see it stretches sideways and up and down as well. So you could use sweater knits, sweat shirtings, types of fleece, athletic knits. To line the pocket inside and the cowl and the hood, you could use cotton spandex to avoid bulk. And whatever you use for the cuffs and the band and the neck band, does need to have elastane or spandex or lycra in there so that it has recovery and you can actually get it to work. In my case, I have used my main fabrics for these. I haven't used different fabrics for the bands or for the neck bands. I've used the fabrics that I was using for the main pieces because they had the required stretch and you know what I wanted from them, which was to stretch and recover here on the neckline. I'm just looking at them right here and I've used a combination of knits for all of these. So you'll see that in one piece, I have two different types of knit fabrics. I've combined rayon French terry, which is a really nice medium weight knit, super lovely. And I've combined that with a jacquard knit. I think they have the same weight, so I thought it was good to combine them. Another one, I've combined a suplex athletic knit with a stretch velvet. 
just because the colors were great and I think they just worked really great together. And for the other one, I used uh, two types of athletic knits, pretty much the same composition, same feel. So I think just look for something that's really similar. If you're going to combine fabrics, don't combine one that's lighter weight than the other. That usually does not work or doesn't look great or hang great either. If you're not familiar with how Sinclair Patterns does their drafting, you will be very pleased to know that they have height files. First, you choose the file based on your height. So you have petite from five foot one to five foot three. Then you have the regular file from five foot four to five foot six. And then you have the tall file from five foot seven to five foot nine. So knowing how tall you are, if you choose the file for your height, you are probably not going to need to do any length adjustments. From there, you can choose your actual size based on your measurements. And the cup sizes go progressively larger with the cup sizes. So size zero will have a BC cup size, and then size 30 will end with an E cup size. So I think that's awesome. For the size that I saw, which is a size 16, I have a CD bus cup size. So that is great, that fits me perfect. For all the patterns I've made with Sinclair patterns, I've used the tall file. I've never had to lengthen the sleeve or lengthen the bodice or lengthen the body of a garment or pants. It's always been really good, so that's awesome. Whenever I see a pattern, the first thing I'm doing is taking measurements to see where I'm going to add more length because I'm just a little bit taller, five foot eight. For this one, I have done zero fitting adjustments. I just cut the pattern as is, made it up, and it's perfect. <laughs> As for the feet, I have mentioned several times that it is semi-fitted, so you will have some positive ease at the bust and the hips, but it's not very, very much. It's one and five eighths of an inch. In metric, that's four centimeters. So it, it's not like you have a lot of room inside, but you're working with a stretchy fabric and that's the way it's supposed to fit. Now, the band that goes at the hem is smaller than the hips, so that section there actually has 10% of negative ease there. You won't see a hem band that is the same size as the bottom circumference because then it will just hang open and not look very nice. Up close and so personal is really jam-packed with practical things. I'm going to show you how to sew this hidden kangaroo pocket, which is like no pocket I have ever sewn and it's super fun. I love the way it looks. You know, I'm not the world's greatest lover of pockets. I tend to not want to sew them. But when I find an interesting pocket that doesn't give me bulk at the hips, which is usually my issue, I really enjoy them. And this one is in the front. It doesn't move anywhere. I'm also going to show you a different way to sew in the raglan sleeves that you may or may not have seen in some woven patterns, but I also apply it to knits. To put together the front piece of the Skyla, it's composed of three pattern pieces. They're all cut on the fold. You have the side front. You can see there's a princess seam type curve right there. It is cut on the fold. It looks like this extended. You'll see this shape in the middle and this is where the pocket is going to go. Then you have the pocket lining that is also cut on the fold. That's how that looks. I'm using a cotton spandex for my pocket lining that matches the color, it's navy. And then you have the center front. It's cut on the fold and when you look at it extended, it looks really pretty. I like the shape of it coming in like that and this area here is going to be the pocket entrance. So I'll show you what prep work you need to do before you start putting all this together. On this center front piece you can see this black strip there. That is actually just a strip of fusible interfacing that I have fused on there to stabilize this so it's not going to stretch out. What I did here was put the lining piece on top just to make sure where the pocket is going to end. So I made a little mark with a pen there and then made sure to interface from there down to there, from there down to there. That was very fast. When you open this side front piece, this is how it looks like. This is like a ribbed stretch velvet that I had, just a small piece of. It's the exact same tone as the background on the navy on this athletic knit. So I thought they were gonna go super well together. Here on these corners, there will be a little snip happening in a little bit. So I just fused a square of interfacing there and there. I've written double U's there, so you can see that this is the wrong side of the fabric. I have also done marks on my pocket lining here that say wrong, wrong, and lots of lines with chalk to make sure I don't get confused. And well, this one's really easy to tell what is the right and the wrong because the wrong is white. So we'll put these two together first. 
Here we have the pocket lining and on the corners here we have these dots. I've marked mine with yellow. The seam allowance here is a quarter of an inch for the whole packet. So that's why intersection here of these seam allowances will make up where that dot is positioned right there. So we have those marked there on the wrong side of the pocket lining. You can see wrong, wrong everywhere. We'll take this side front piece and put it right sides up facing us. This is where the little square was already put on there to stabilize it. And now we are going to place this on top, right side to right side, wrong side there facing up on the pocket lining piece. And we are going to center this on top and match that shape right there. So what we are going to sew is from that dot to that dot right there, not all the way to the edge, just up to the dots right there, reinforce. I will do that with a sewing machine. I don't really think you can do this accurately directly with a serger. What you can do with the serger is after you've sewn this seam, you can come in here at this point and start serging right there. So remember we have right sides together of the side front and the pocket lining and we sew from one dot to the other. Okay, now we need to snip into there. I'm just gonna go and snip onto this one right up to where we had sewn so that this can extend like this and the same on this side. Now that I've snipped that, I'll just serge this edge here that's in the middle right there. Okay, so that's how it looks, serged and snipped into there. Okay, so this was just sewn there from the dot there to the dot there, the corner snipped sewn and surged and let's put this aside this is a pretty piece it has a nice fabric in my case that's the shape and you want it to be facing right sides up towards you at the back here is this entrance where we had stabilized previously now we are going to take what we just did and put it like this we'll put this on top just like we've been working on it this is the right side here of the fabric the wrong side is under there we have the wrong side of the pocket lining facing us so what we need to do now is take this part and fold it inside like that and take this one and fold it inside so that you have these long pieces protruding on the top and you have the wrong side now facing up and you have right sides touching right there. So it looks a bit fiddly. <laughs> Basically you just folded this in. I'll just show you again what I've done. So this is how we were working on it right sides together, side front pieces there, this is the nice part of the fabric, the pocket here is right sides together touching and we've just done all that. Now just put it on top of your front piece that is right sides up, lift this up here, put this inside and then you have this princess seam matching this curve and you end up with the right sides of the fabric together. The same on the other side and that's how you can match it up. This is why you have to snip into there so that this can extend. You need to keep this out of the way because you're going to be sewing just right here. So you're not going to be catching this inside. You're going to be catching right at that dot there. And that's how you're going to sew that princess seam, including the pocket lining on this curve here. So I'll go to the sewing machine and just pin it super carefully and show you how that looks. Okay, I've got it all pinned. This is so fun. It's going to be so nice to turn these right sides out. But here on the princess seams, you can see a notch there on the side front. And you can see it matches the center front notch there for both of these. And if you just pin from the top and start going around this curve, you'll see that everything matches perfect. This is where the snip was done and have the seam allowance going up. You need to make sure that this area is at completely out of the way and you'll be sewing exactly there on that dot in a straight seam that goes across that. And then it'll curve and this will be the pocket entrance. Then you pivot and then you'll keep going straight down there and it's the same on the other side. So it's two very funny seams very fun. I'm going to go ahead and sew them and serge them and then we can sort of flip these right sides out. I've been using a shallow zigzag stitch to sew everything and I'm using my quarter inch presser foot to help me with the seam allowance. This is where the snipped happen in there. You don't want to sew a larger seam allowance because you're going to catch part of this. You need to see where your seam stopped and sew right on top of that. 
also in here you are going to have these pieces dangling just make sure you keep them here in the center that they don't go out and get caught in the seam that you're sewing now you definitely just want to be sewing two layers here and not catch any of this there while you sew this is the pocket entrance and here on the center front is where it's been stabilized Start on the other side, I'm going to start from the bottom of the pocket and going up. Make sure you touch here and you make sure you've got nothing of this side front here getting into your seam. So I'm just touching to make sure it's all out of the way. And here I can see exactly where I have to sew so that I don't catch part of this part here. Okay, so that was fun. <laughs> Remember we still have all these pieces in here between the pocket bag and the main. But now we just get to take this and flip it out. Just bring it all out. center front panel will include these pockets so we have these little corners that we need to turn right here so this is how the front is going to look you're going to have this center front panel that I opted to do with this print and then I have all the navy on the sides and now all this is the pocket bag now it's open at the bottom, but that doesn't matter. It will be open at the bottom, but it will be caught within the band or whatever method you use. And now this was the section there that we snipped and had to be careful with. So I need to give this a good press. If you want to, you can top stitch these pocket entrances from here on this curve right there if you want to, or you could just skip that. I don't think I want top stitching that much. Once I've pressed it and made it all neat, then we just need to stitch this down here and fix it in place and then this is where you're going to put your hand inside and it'll be your pocket at this stage you know this is all open but as i said this will be caught you know at the bottom <laughs> with the band so on the center front here you have three layers you have the same fabric here that goes on the side you have the pocket lining which i made in a cotton spandex and the center front so this section will have three layers and here on the sides you will just have one layer Okay, so it's all neat. I love how this is looking. I'm excited to finish this. My raglan sleeves will have this same navy fabric. My back will have the floral fabric and the cuffs of the sleeves will have the floral fabric. So I will have a good mix of both of these. I love it. Now all I need to do is sew this down there and that will fix that in place. And then I can move on and assemble this as normal. Now the neckline, I have it there. I didn't have enough of either of these to cut any hood piece. So I would just be doing a neckband up there, which is also another option for this pattern. I'm going to try and do this the neatest way I can. And I want to do a double row of top stitching. So I'll start a quarter of an inch from the edge. Go up there, pivot, go around, and then go down, stitching on the edge. That will reinforce this area. So I will be doing it freehand, and I hope it turns out neat. This is a straight stitch now. And because I have several layers of fabric, I'll be using a 3.5 stitch length. happy with how that looks a wider one pivoting going around and there and I caught that right there on the edge so I'm happy that this is nice and firm there so I'll just repeat that on the other side okay what I have here is unconventional and I have taken my front piece everything complete and placed it on top of the back and sewn the side seams already now I have this open area here for the raglan sleeves and this is how I sew my raglan sleeves on the round as such, although it's not on the round because you have this open area here. It will be one continuous seam instead of sewing the raglan sleeves on the flat, which 
has the same objective as when I saw them on the round on regular sleeves and it's to avoid having the bulk here and the seam folding onto itself here on the underarm. So I have my raglan sleeves here. For mine, because I didn't have enough fabric of this, I cut this one shorter and then drafted an extra longer cuff to meet the original length. So that's the difference with mine. So all I have to do now here is turn these right sides out, match it with the armhole here with the front put it inside and I'll have right sides together here and then I'll just match that seam match it all along here on the front you can see that notch there match this, match it all along the back and then I'll sew and it'll be like sewing a U shape and that's how I can sew my raglan sleeves on the round although it's not on the round because the top part of the raglan sleeves is part of the neckline so I just wanted to show you how I like to do it. You'll find occasionally this technique on woven patterns that have a raglan sleeve, but it can also be applied to this. What I do here is push one seam allowance to one side, the seam allowance of the body of the hoodie will go to the back, and the seam allowance of the sleeve will go to the front, and that way they can just make up less bulk and I just feel it more comfortable like that. I'm sewing on the sleeves, this is a princess seam, the seams of the princess seams will be going towards the centre, so make sure they're going this way. I can pull my sleeves out like this and both are sewn on at this point I can try on my top I haven't cut the neckband because I know I possibly might want to change it when it's on the body just depends if it's too high I might lower it a little bit that was done previously it's much easier to put on the cuffs before putting on the sleeve because you don't have to deal with the whole hoodie hanging off when you're just trying to put on a cuff <laughs> and the hem I don't have enough fabric to cut out a band so so far I've basted the pocket area together right there just to keep it in place and save it from dangling around and I am possibly going to bind the bottom and cover that raw edge I think this is way too bulky to just fold up and hem normally that would be like six layers right there because there's three layers here so it's not something I would want to do but I would be happy to bind the edges and that's how this could finish nice and neat. It will end up a little bit shorter than the original, but I just did not have enough of this fabric or this fabric to cut the band. I'll just see if this neckline is okay for me or if I want to change it a little bit. Before I show you them, I need to point out that the back piece is cut on the fold on this pattern and none of my versions have the back on the fold. It was just no way I could get it done because I was working with scraps. So my three versions have a center back seam, which is something I don't mind doing. I'm all for them. There's nothing wrong with having a center back seam. So I'll show you the most simple one first, which is the one where you just fold part of the pattern pieces away and just create regular princess seams. I made this out of suplex. I've had this blue material for years. It was probably like 65 centimeters, way, way less than a yard. And so I was able to get the shorter pattern pieces from it, like this side panel right there. This raglan sleeve you can see is short. This is not part of the pattern. The pattern doesn't have a short sleeve option because it's a hoodie, it's long. <laughs> but you can cut it shorter. As reference, from the bottom here, I have a seam that is three inches. That's how long it is. And then I left a bit more for hem allowance, like three quarters of an inch. So that's how I get a t-shirt type Skylar, which is not intended, but totally possible. Now this is medium weight fabric. It is not lightweight fabric at all. It is athletic material. So nice. I could get this wet. It could be like a rash guide if I wanted it to be. <laughs> so it's multi-purpose. And the blue in the center is just navy suplex that matches this. This material was also left over from something else and I was able to cut the back piece from this as well. 
So actually the only area of the garment that has contrast is the center. And I love the look of the princess seams on a raglan top like this. It does not have the hemband, I just hemmed it normally. And the neckline is round with a neckband. For these round necklines, I tried it on first. I sewed it as it was and determined, as you saw, that I wanted to drop it like one and a half inches. So that's what I did. You know, I have my masterclass on neckbands that shows you how to calculate the circumference and cut your own neckband pieces when you want to modify necklines, when you want them higher or lower. Have a look at that because all that information gives you the total freedom to do what you really want. From a pattern, I wanted this to be sort of like a t-shirt, so I didn't really want that neckline to be so high. So this is my first one. I really love it. I love the fit. I love everything about it. And I'm so glad I got it from tiny pieces of fabric. It's just the best feeling. <laughs> Let's see it on. This is my Skyla in an athletic knit. This is the sweater version without the pockets. It's included in the pattern in the instructions. Mine doesn't have a band. This is made out of scraps. I had nothing left over for a band. I have my neckline a tad lower than the original. And this is a really nice heavy fabric I could get wet in or wear with a skirt. And I really like the look, the combination of colors here. You can see the colors up closer. It's a navy suplex with a print suplex, athletic knits, medium to heavy weight, I would say. I made my sleeves shorter. And from here down, I have about three inches from the underarm seam there. That's how much I was able to get from my fabric. I'm very happy that I can have this pattern that's meant to be a hoodie also for summer like this. I love the princess seam on a top like this that can be super casual and fits really well. The neckline was slightly higher, about an inch and a half higher. I like it a little bit lower, but it's still pretty high. It's not low or anything. It's very nice. It's what I like and I've got a simple neckband there. I always like this shape of the raglan sleeves shown with different fabrics. I think it's a pretty seam line, different to when you just have a regular sleeve. So I like the navy here and the print there. I think it looks nice and this is a nice length sleeve. It reaches sort of half point of my arm before the elbow. For the original pocket piece, this goes in and then out a little bit. This just goes straight down and it's such an easy hack to do to the pattern. And I'm very glad it's in the pattern because it gives you more options. I always have a center back seam, but you can never tell it's there because of the print. Super happy with the option of making this into a t-shirt as such. Not official, but totally doable. And you can use tiny pieces of fabric to make this happen, which is what makes me the happiest. I really, really enjoyed this one. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been The next one has the color combinations that I mostly love. It's got red and it's got mainly black. The centerpiece and the back and the cuffs are fabric left over from making a dress. I had a piece left over, I knew I liked it and it became this. Now the black French terry, I do have yardage of this. So I just took a little bit from there to get my raglan sleeves. I have the regular cuff here, super pretty. And you can see the centerpiece is like this it's got a type of prince of wales print and it just contrasts so pretty this curved edge like this is so nice so this is a skyla hoodie with the hidden kangaroo pocket and i have put the hemband on this one you put your hand inside and the pockets are there so and they are caught in the hemband so they don't move anywhere when you wear it you can't really see that they're there and it just looks like this is some color blocking you can barely see the pocket entrance and I really like that. And that's how it looks at the back. I have a center back seam. I did try to match everything across like that so that makes sense. So I don't have areas up and down. You know, I'm always very careful with that. I did do a neckband that is a V here. I did drop the neckline from the original round neckline. I dropped it two inches to create that V. And if you've been following my channel, you know I have a series on V necklines. I also have a video showing you how to do this with free neckband printables. You can print them out and adapt the length to whatever V neckline you're making. 
and that's how I'm able to pop on a V on anything. <laughs> I really like it. I wanted to have something different, something deeper like this. So nice, I love it. And yeah, this is just a great, great style that I'm going to love to wear and it's got my colors. So happy. This is another one of the Skyla hoodies that I made. Also, it doesn't have a hood and I have actually modified the neckline to be a V and I've added my own neckband there. And I've got a contrast red Prince of Wales type jacquard unit in the center. Leftover from another project. I also have that fabric at the back and on the cuffs. And for the rest, I have a rayon French terry in black really like the combination of the black and red as always the rayon french terry is not a scrap i actually have yardage of that so i was able to cut bands without a problem here and it matches everything here up closer you can see this i think you can see the contrast more in this one because red and black contrast a bit more i really love this look it's so pretty pockets start there they go into there all the layers here are sewn into the band so it's all closed and nothing moves and wiggles around in there at all really love it because it doesn't make any bulk always love these curved princess seams and shape there i think in black or dark colors always looks really nice the band hugs the hips a little bit but it's not excessively tight this is the single cuff that comes with the pattern there's also the option of doing it double and having a thumb hole detail to make my v from the original scoop here i lowered it two inches and then made my v measure that use my own v neck band templates that i have and just put that on i think it always looks really nice i wanted it black so it would contrast this fabric here i really like how that looks i also wanted to incorporate a v neck band here because i just like v necklines so why not <laughs> i'm sure i would not make this pattern in a solid because then you wouldn't see all these shapes i think styles like this are great to use up neat fabrics that you have left over that are super pretty you for sure are going to be able to get this front piece at least and then the rest can be all just in a solid i really like that option and i love 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 how this looks and feels on so pretty i'm very happy The third one is the one that you saw me sewing in the practical segment and I've saved the best for last in my opinion. These fabrics are just the best. You would have seen this printed fabric in my Nioka dress that I made at the end of 2020. It was my last make of 2020. A lovely, lovely dress that is also from Sinclair Patterns. I also had oddly pieced things left there that I knew I would use eventually and it became this. And it's so pretty. It's got a navy blue back. Now this piece of stretch velvet was so small, it was also about 65 centimeters and you can see it's got a, like a rib texture. It does have a nap, so I did drape this on my body to check which was the side that I liked best. This is the side that looks darker with the sun. If you look at it the other way, it looks lighter and I didn't like that. So I like it like this. This means that the nap is smooth when you touch it up like this. So I use that stretch velvet that has the same tone of blue as the background. I really wanted that to match because I had other fabrics I could have combined to this, but that had other tones of navy and I think they did not look very good. So I'm so happy that this worked. This also has the deeper neckline with the neckband and the hidden pockets that you saw me sew. This is the one that has anatomical cuff. So it's wider on the top, narrower at the bottom. So it follows the shape of your arm. So you can have a rectangle cuff when it's small. So this would be the cuff in the pattern. It's quite narrow, it's at the bottom, it's a rectangle, it's fine. But, but if you want to do the thing about having the longer cuff, you can't just do a huge rectangle because it'll fit the forearm and then just hang really wide and it won't look very good at the wrist. But it has a shape like this, like an, like an hourglass. Wide, narrow, then wide again. And then you fold it, you sew it, you flip it. That's to get the shape to be wider here for the forearm and narrower at the wrist. 
And that's what I've done here. Fabric is not long enough, like this velvet piece was. I didn't want to make a three quarter length hoodie because I think that's a bit silly. I mean, I'll do the short sleeves or the long sleeves. <laughs> I was happy to have enough of this to cut out this special type of cuff. And this one also has a center back seam. I don't really mind, it's fine. I didn't have enough of either of these two to make the band. So I didn't do the hem band, but it was too bulky here to fold it up in hem normally. So I cut part of the stretch velvet and sewed it on as binding like that. So the binding on the inside has just been surged. It's not folded in again because that's just too bulky. So the binding is sewn on the right side, flipped to the inside. And then I've used my stitch in the ditch foot, so you can't really see a seam. I think it looks super pretty going across the blue right there and going across the blue over here. I was very careful to not stretch out my knit when I was sewing this on. So I think it was a great way to finish this hem without having to fold it. I don't think you can hem it normally because there's just too many layers right there. So I think this binding is a really, really great technique. I will leave a video linked down below where you can see exactly how to do this. I'm showing it on a neckline or an armhole, I think, but you can perfectly do the same thing on a hem. I will leave that video below with a minute exactly where you can find that, how to do that, because I didn't film it for this one. I am so in love with this one. As much as I'm in love with my New Yorker dress, the fabric is just everything. And having a different type of garment like this, so pretty, so feminine, just the best. So let's see this one. Here's my Colorblock Skyla hoodie, only this doesn't have a hoodie. It has a neckband instead, and that is part of the pattern options, so that's good. I just did not have enough fabric to do any of the hood options or the cowl, although I love them. This is something I had left over from making a dress. And I can't remember, but I've been holding this stretch velvet that I have on the sides for years. Tiny, tiny piece that was enough to get the side pieces. Part of the raglan sleeves. I made the raglan sleeve shorter. And I don't have the hemband at the bottom because I didn't have enough fabric. So I have bound the edges. I've got a trusty denim skirt and some navy booties. I love this look for autumn. I could swap this out for sandals as well. My favorite feature is the shape that you have here. You have princess seams coming from the arm side and then they curve in creating that fake hourglass look which is always super pretty. And then from here you have the entrance to the pocket that is sort of hidden. It just looks like this is the shape of the top but actually from here you have the hidden pockets inside and I think that's super nice. I love pockets that are interesting like this and pretty. You know I'm not a fan of pockets in the inseam or here on the hips but ones that are on the front and that don't create any bulk, I'm a fan of and I really like these, super fun to sew. And here at the bottom, you can see that I've bound my hem with the same stretch velvet. I had a piece left over and I wrapped the raw edges around there. I couldn't really fold this up and hem it normally because there are three layers of fabric here in the center front. So this was a nice option and I think it looks really nice. I had to cut my raglan sleeve shorter because I didn't have enough fabric, so I created a shaped long cuff. It is a cuff, but it's not a rectangle, so that it's wider here at the forearm, and then narrower here at the wrist, and they're nice and long. They cover sort of half of my hands, and I think that's a really nice look. You know, raglan sleeves are easy to fit, so they're easy to sew, they always look great. I love this seam going across, I think it's always super pretty. Love it. And this neckline is slightly lower. You saw that I dropped mine by about an inch and a half and just recalculated my circumference and made my neckband a little bit longer. I think it looks really nice. A little bit more chest here, but nothing too much. It's not super scooped. Nothing makes me happier than using up my scraps, especially really nice ones like this. This floral knee is amazing. I love it. It's a suplex. I like the feel of it on my skin and I love the print and I think it looks really pretty in the center front area. I've also got it on the back and I've got a center back seam there that you can't see. And the combination with the navy is always so pretty to highlight the raglan sleeves. And this princess seam, I love it. It's just so pretty. Such a pretty pattern. I feel great in this pattern and even though it's a sporty one, I can still dress it up and 
this neckband is nice and fresh for me it's still really hot here when I make this pattern again with actual fabric not, not with scraps I'll put on the hood or the cowl because I like those too but this is perfect and I love that this is also an option for this pattern what can I do? I'm very happy with my makes. I made them all in about a day and a half. I had so much fun while sewing them. I think this is an amazing pattern. It's a great fit with lots of options. And I like all these possibilities that you can do for color blocking and matching up your fabrics. It's great when a design allows for that. I'm so, so, so happy with my makes. I'm just ready for autumn to come along. And I also have a t-shirt that can work when it's hot as well. I think the pattern is so versatile like that. So many options. I'm sure I'm not over with this pattern yet. <laughs> Don't forget that Sinclair Patterns has a selection of maybe three or four every week on special. If you go to the website on the top and click on specials, you will find the ones that have a discounted price. That's how this pattern is discounted this week. And I think the patterns switch over on Mondays or Tuesdays. So just have a look at the website. I've left my affiliate link down below if you'd like to use it. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to have motivated you to dive into your scraps and find your best knits. You can match with some solids and get awesome garments like this. I will see you again very soon. Bye.